Hello, I'm Stanislav Sevolodovich Spassky, a physicist. So, the derivation of the formula of the century. Let's start with a fragment of Einstein's speech, where he says that the equivalence of mass and energy is a consequence of the special relativity. It follows from the special theory of relativity that mass and energy are food, are but different manifestations of the same thing. Here is how special relativity, or SR, is now presented in the mass media. In 1905, the genius Einstein created the great special relativity, not accepted within our common sense, with an incomprehensible relationship between the categories of space and time. And from the special relativity Einstein derived the so-called formula of the century, which formed the basis of nuclear physics. It's not quite like that. Firstly, this formula in different versions has already been derived earlier. Secondly, even in Einstein's version of the derivation it was possible, and would be easier, to do without the special relativity. We will discuss both the Einstein's derivation variant, and the same one, but without using the special relativity. And then we will show a very simple derivation, proposed by the mathematician Poincare five years before Einstein. So, in 1905, the young Einstein wrote four articles. The first article was devoted to what is now called special relativity. And in the fourth article the derivation of the known formula was offered. At that, one of the formulas of the first article was used. First, consider Einstein's derivation. In a thought experiment, a particle of mass m is considered in two inertial systems. The first system is connected with the particle. The second system moves at a speed v, conditionally to the right relative to the particle. The particle moves in it at a speed v to the left. At some moment of time, a particle, resting in the first system, emits two identical electromagnetic waves in opposite directions, each with an energy of half L. The total energy is equal to L. It is clear, and it is important, that the particle must remain at the same place. But this means, that in the second system, the particle, moving at a speed v to the left, must continue to move to the left at the previous speed v, after the emission of two waves. Note that in the second system, the directions of both waves are no longer opposite, their directions are deflected to the left due to the relative motion of the system. The total energy L' prime here is. It does not depend on the wave directions in the first system. The mathematical expression for L' prime was a consequence from the first article, the future special relativity. Therefore, it is now accepted to consider the special relativity as the only possible source of the famous formula. Now concentrate, because Einstein's derivation is more complicated, than the next two. First, in each of the two systems, we write the energy conservation law, before, and after radiation. We mark variables of the second system with a prime symbol. E0 and E0 prime are the particle energies before radiation in the first and second systems, E1 and E1 prime are after radiation, L and L' prime are the total wave energies in the first and second systems. Then a term-by-term -term subtraction of the first equality from the second is made. Why? The difference between the energies of a particle in motion and at rest is, by definition, the kinetic energy of the particle in the second system. We obtain the relation for the kinetic energies in the second system, before and after radiation. Obviously, L' prime minus L is greater than zero, since L' prime is greater than L. But this means, that K' prime zero is greater than K' prime one. That is, the kinetic energy of the particle after radiation should decrease. But remember, that the velocity of the particle v does not change after radiation. So the mass of the particle must decrease. Let's count. Since Einstein is only looking for the energy of the rest mass, he considers the variant of a velocity v significantly less than c. In this case, the complex expression L prime minus L can be simplified, using known relations for small numbers. From the first and second we get. In the resulting expression, we reduce the common factor, standing in all terms. And we get the result, the radiation of energy causes a decrease of mass. The mass difference m0 minus m1 is called the mass defect. 
Now let me show the variant of Einstein's derivation, but without using the special relativity, considering not the energies of two waves, but their momenta. Recall that the relationship of energy E and momentum P for traveling electromagnetic waves was found theoretically long ago, still by Maxwell, and experimentally confirmed by Lebedev in 1899. Unlike Einstein, we will limit ourselves to the direction of motion of the second system perpendicular to the direction of the radiated waves. This is legitimate, since the defect of the rest mass cannot depend on the direction of motion of the second system. In the second system, the mass moves to the left at the speed of v. And wave objects, flying apart, are always on the same vertical with the mass. Therefore, their trajectories in the second system have slopes to the left in the ratio v to c. This means that the momentum vectors of both waves here have x component of momentum to the left. This means that they must take part of the momentum of the particle at radiation. But as noted, the speed of the particle after radiation does not change. There is only one possibility, the possibility of decrease of the mass of the particle. Let's count. We express the momentum P of one wave through its energy E. Then, we find the X component of the wave momentum P according to the ratio V and C. And multiplying by 2, we get the total momentum of the two waves. The particle's momentum should decrease by this quantity after radiation. We reduce the common factor V, standing in all terms. We get the same result as Einstein, but without using special relativity, and much simpler. It is possible, that by using special relativity to derive the formula, Einstein wanted to increase the significance of his first article. In Wikipedia sections on the history and priority of the equivalence formula, eight names are listed, starting in 1871, ending with Lorenz and Poincaré. At the end it says, however, only in Einstein's derivation this dependence is universal, not related to the ether and not linked to electrodynamics. No, there is a clear link to electrodynamics. And now the simplest derivation of this formula, obtained by Poincaré in 1900, five years before Einstein. In his derivation, we consider an initially resting mass m at the point A, which at some moment emits a light wave with energy E to the right. Its momentum is E divided by C to the right. Poincaré uses the fact, that for the system of two objects, initially resting, the position of the center of mass should remain in the same place, at the point A. Mass m after radiation should start moving to the left. For the center of mass to remain in the same place, it is necessary, that the wave has a certain mass m, otherwise it will not work. That is, the wave momentum is equal to mc. Equating two expressions, we get, that radiating mass m must lose mass e divided by c square. This is a derivation five years before Einstein. The derivation is elementary, and without using the special relativity. When you see such an image, you should be aware, that it is the product of a powerful PR campaign, launched in the media since 1919, which raised the wave of the so-called Einstein mania. The campaign continues now. The internet is regularly and intensively updated with new films about Einstein. Now a few words about the special relativity itself, in respect of which everything is no less interesting. Since the 18th century, physicists have understood the wave nature of light. The supposed wave medium was called ether. There were attempts to reveal our movement relative to the ether by comparing the speed of light waves in directions. But the experiments revealed a paradox, C invariant, that is, the same speed of light in directions, in any inertial system. Physicists were in shock. The problem was solving by the best of them, including Lorenz, and the mathematician number one, Poincaré. In 1905, they are just over 50, the age of maturity and sound thought. In coordinate system, that is actually resting relative to the wave medium, a rather simple and symmetric, wave equation works. Only in these systems. But in 1904 Lorentz found, that this wave equation also works in moving coordinate system, but only if three distortions are introduced into such system with respect to time and the longitudinal axis. These distortions were called Lorentz transformations. In such artificial system, all wave movements look like in a system, connected with a wave medium. Therefore, the speed of light waves in it is invariant. 
and a year later in 1905 Einstein in the special relativity developed one idea of the mathematician Poincaré, the idea of the possibility of constructing a satisfactory theory purely formally, mathematically, only on the basis of the postulate of the invariant C. Poincaré did not develop it, considering that it would be difficult and incomprehensible to physicists. But it is important to note that neither Lorenz nor Poincaré ever doubted the reality of the ether. Einstein derived how a moving system must be distorted so that the speed of light in it remains invariant, as in the observer's system. The distortions appeared exactly the same as in the Lorentz transformations. And since then, special relativity has been using them. It would be possible to realize that such a complete coincidence of distortions is not accidental, that the task was essentially the same. And also to realize that the objects of our world are wave objects on a wave medium. But in his work, Einstein rejected the wave medium itself, the ether, on the grounds that this concept violates the complete symmetry of all inertial systems. At the same time, he generally rejected common sense in physics. Note that now in the presentation of the special relativity they always somehow forget that later, in the general theory of relativity, Einstein returned to primordial medium. But for the creators of the myth of genius, it was usefully to leave a more radical and incomprehensible approach with the rejection of ether. The powerful PR company gradually left Einstein as the sole creator of the only correct approach to the problem of C invariance. And from that time on, other approaches were openly rejected as anti scientific at the mere mention of ether. I know this firsthand. My articles were rejected both in the Soviet Union and by the International Archive, without specifying the reasons. Here's what physicist Lachlan, the Nobel Prize winning, says about tricky taboo on ether. In my video on special relativity, I have intentionally used a simplified model. In principle, there are two types of wave objects, a running wave, and a standing wave, which can shift. And there are just as many types of particles, without a rest mass, such as a photon, and with a rest mass. This simple model explains the essence of the C invariant and all the basic formulas of the special relativity, including the century formula. Thanks for your attention.